back at Niagara. A majestic look at Horseshoe Fall. 700,000 gallons of water a second pouring over. A waterfall some 1,000 feet in diameter. And there is the wire strung. A man will walk over that raging maelstrom of water. That long, long little wire. Uphill, downhill, and again. A platform two inches in diameter. As you can imagine, this will be a physical test, exhausting the mental workout, maybe even harder for Nick Willenda. But he says if you even think of failing, if that even crosses your mind, you will fail. So we have wire, water, weather, Willenda. All of them have to combine perfectly. How'd you like that alliteration? Nice. And uh, our good buddy, John Brinkus from ESPN and his sports science team, they're going to walk us through the challenges Nick faces tonight, one step at a time. Here's a breakdown of the physiology and physics of Nick Walenda's 1,500-foot walk across Niagara Falls. The human foot has three main balance points, like a camera tripod. Standing on the two-inch wire reduces Nick's normal balance point by a third. However, the heel is the part of the foot most sensitive to vibration, with nerve endings that respond in as little as six ten thousandths of a second. That's more than 16 times faster than our brains process visual stimuli. And this sensitivity will help Nick rapidly adjust to the wire's oscillations. One of Nick's challenges is that humans are top heavy with roughly two thirds of our mass in the top third of our body with his feet close together. Nick's like an inverted pyramid with a decreased base of support and increased lateral instability. But the 40 pound pole changes the physics. Bent at the ends, it effectively lowers Nick's center of mass and increases what's called his moment of inertia or resistance to rotation. This means it will take more external force to knock him off balance. Of course, Nick can't control external forces like wind and water, but he does need to control the tricks his mind can play. The human brain gauges balance using three streams of sensory input. The first, of course, is vision. Next is the inner ear's vestibular system, which detects changes in the head's linear and rotational accelerations. Balance's third component is called proprioception, a network of sensors in our skin, muscles, and joints, which help track each of our limbs' relative position. But looking at objects more than 65 feet away can create conflict with the other senses. A glance at the bottom of Niagara Falls, roughly 200 feet below the wire, could create mixed signals in Nick's brain, resulting in dizziness or vertigo. Of course, it could be argued that Nick Walenda has already proven he can suppress one of our most important senses, common sense. For ESPN Sports Science, I'm John Brinkus.